What is going on guys? This is Sam and this is Car Legion. Welcome back for another video. For today's video, we have the 2019 BMW 3 Series. But before we get to that and review it, I wanna to talk to you about something. If you have five seconds of your time, just go through around my videos, check out my playlist, see some of the modified cars. If you are into modified cars, I'll have a lot of options for you. So just five seconds of your time, that's all I need. Now, back to the car. Okay, so back to this. This is the 2019 uh, BMW 3 Series, also called the G20. This model is the BMW 330i X Drive. So today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what it's all about, some cool features, details, and then, and then we're gonna take it for a quick test drive. So let's start. Before we get to in details, let's start with this. The key fob. You see, this thing is completely redesigned and it does miracles. I'm gonna show you how to use it. And of course, we're gonna start, we're gonna use it to drive the car. So let's begin. Now, let's think for a moment, summertime, it's really hot. You're sitting inside a coffee shop having your coffee and you just don't wanna get in the hot seats and hot leather. And what you basically wanna do is to open uh, the car, to unlock the car, you press this and if you hold it, something else happens. Let me show you. As you can see, windows roll down. Now you can let it sit for a few minutes and get some fresh air and you're probably ready to go in. Now, the other thing is that if you want to, and this is probably the first time BMW has introduced this, is that if you want to start the car without getting in, press the lock button three times. And the car starts. That's actually a cool feature of the new key fob. Now, to stop the car, you press this three times. And it shuts down. I love that, that's brilliant. Now, let's talk about the exterior design. As we know, the new BMW 3 Series is completely redesigned inside out. What we're gonna do first is that we'll talk about the exterior, some differences with the previous model, and then we'll get in the car and show you some of the cool features inside. And of course, after that, we'll take it for a drive. Now, let's begin with the exterior. Let's start with the headlights at the front. See, the headlights are completely redesigned as well. BMW calls this a U-shape, basically, for this one here and this one here. These are the daylight running lights. And then at the same time, the bumper is completely redesigned here. You have the fog lights and then in here you basically have the sensors inside and then at the same time you the shape over here is completely redesigned which makes the car look very aggressive now if you remember the old BMW wasn't like this look very stock this one looks very M like I absolutely love the bumper I love um, the grill, even the grill, although some people are not very happy with it, it looks kind of big. In person, it doesn't. To me, it looks very normal. I guess I'm got, I used to it because I've seen this car multiple times, but I find it very normal. Um, the headlights, absolutely aggressive. The fog lights are perfect shape. And then at the same time, you get enough air for your um, engine at the front. Anyhow, let's go to the back. Okay, at the back, completely redesigned as well. Tail lights, completely redesigned. This looks like an L shape. If you look at the actual, um, the red light, which is the braking light here, completely, like, looks like an L shape. It starts from here all the way to there. And then, of course, another interesting feature on this. You probably remember the old model of the 3 Series, such as the 328i and the 320, which was the lower end of the BMW 3 Series. They did not come with this type of exhaust system. This is a twin tailpipe um, and basically sounds way more aggressive than the other ones. And <laughs> 
this is one thing that I love about this 3 Series. Absolutely love the fact they've done this. It looked the car, it look the car looks way more aggressive. I love the fact they put this in here, but they clearly don't have any function. Um, they're just basically cosmetic change, just to make the bumper look more a bit more aggressive than it is uh, from a previous model. Now, price-wise, how much does it cost? Well, we're in Canada. This starts at forty-nine thousand dollars Canadian, which is a bit more than the previous model. About that price, BMW. It's it's kind of expensive. I mean, yes, it's great, but if if you can lower the price just a bit for everybody else, I think it would be great. Great. I mean if you can I don't know moving on to next so as you see the BMW is completely redesigned the 3 series completely different from the previous model but there is something interesting as well you see the new model it's wider it's longer and taller and at the same time it's actually lighter it's lighter by 55 kg or 120 pounds lighter than the previous model which is very good I gotta say, BMW, great job on that. That is absolutely great. Also, for today's video, special thanks goes to BMW Auto House and specifically Omar for allowing me to take this baby for a test drive and see some of the cool features. Um, if you want to know more about the dealership, everything will be in the description box. If you want to reach out to Omar himself, the Instagram account will be there. And if you have any questions, I'm sure he'll be more than happy to help you. But special thanks to him for giving me a chance to see this and probably more cars to come from this dealership. Now, next to the mirrors, very similar to the other model, not very different, still looking aggressive, still looking great, you still have the side marker as well, perfectly fine. Wheels, basic standard wheels, brakes, basic one piston brakes, not very uh, performance wise, just day to day driving, same at the back as well. Similar to the front, not performance, just one piston, regular brakes, which are great. But we're gonna test them um, once we take the car for a quick test ride. Now, let's go to the back. And the new uh, BMW features the uh, automatic opening. So basically what you do is that you slide your foot under and the boot opens itself. Love that. Boot size, it's exactly the same as the previous model. Um, it's about 480 liters of space. I believe it's 17 cubic feet. Um, it's perfectly fine. Enough space here you can fit anything. I love this. I love cars with big boot because I love to put my equipment in there. This is perfect. Now, to close it, basically you can press this to close the boot. And if you want to lock the car, you can press this. So let's close the boot for now. I'm not sure if you can close the boot the same way as you open it. Oh, you can. Perfect. There you go. So you don't have to actually touch anything. You just basically slide your foot under and fast and you're good to go. Of course, you still get a sunroof and the sunshade as well. Um, this is basically visible. You can see even if you close it or you just close the underside here and then just basically not have any um, light coming in. Now that was pretty much for the exterior. Um, as I said, completely redesigned, very different from the previous model, very much more aggressive in the front, more aggressive at the back as well. Um, the shape of those grills, I love them. Yes, they look weird in the photo, but to me in person, they look perfect. I don't find them um, as big as people make them. So it looks just perfect. Now, time to move on and see the interior and some cool features in there. Before we talk about anything about the inside, let's open the hood and see what we have in there. And then to open the hood, you basically go under the steering wheel beside the pedals and you press this lever here twice, first and then second. Okay, and then you just basically lift. It has um, shock absorbers on each side to hold it, so you don't have to worry about anything over here. Um, so what we have in here is a four-cylinder twin power turbocharged engine producing about 255 horsepower and about 280 pound-feet of torque, which is about seven horsepower more than the previous model and seven and uh, 37 horsepower more of the pound-feet uh, pound of torque. Now, what it does in zero to 60 or zero to 100, it does it in five 0.6 seconds. That's very impressive for a car like this. Um, I love the fact that BMW is introducing turbocharged engines. I love turbocharged engines. I love the previous model, uh, the regular, not turbocharged too, but turbocharged is probably the way to go. Anyhow, let's go in and check out the interior. To open the door, if it's locked, you just basically slide your hand inside the door handle and it opens up. Um, 
even though it's a 330 you still get the M badge in here um, let's look at the door first what you get is basically a memory setting two memory setting in here the regular button for the mirrors for the uh, windows as well lock um, unlock and lock button of course the trunk button is located here pretty cool on that um, I love that part by the way so we're inside pretty amazing inside I must say this the, the design over here BMW has done it I mean great job on this I don't know if I can clap right now but okay let me try maybe I can clap for them I'm gonna do it for you BMW because you did a great job great job on this absolutely great Anyhow, back to the interior. What you get is basically the cluster, seven inch, 12 inch screen over there. Um, the steering wheel is very similar to the other models. The interior is very uh, very similar to the other model. The center console completely uh, similar to, I'd say the five series as well. Um, the shift knob, very done, very well done BMW. I love that shift knob. The shift knob is very um, futuristic, I'd say. Um, and then, of course, you got all the buttons in here, all the necessary buttons that you need. You got for the media, menu. Here's an interesting fact. The start and stop button, it's not located beside the column, the steering column is located beside the shift knob for better access. I think that's a great idea. A lot of cars are doing that nowadays. Um, they're moving it beside there into the shift knob. Easy to start the car. The back, the center console in here, what you get is two charging ports for your phone. And at the same time, you get the control here for your climate. For, and heated seats and heated seats on this side okay so first of all they are in every door so let me show you exactly what I mean you see this bar here this bar at night when you open the door lights up flashes pretty much so in case let's say um, bicycle is coming from this side uh, let me just fix the brightness for you guys if a bicycle is coming on this side at night and sometimes they can't see the door opening of course some cars do have a light underneath here and basically just to show you the path but this flashes at night to show you exactly that the door is opening and to watch out so a cyclist doesn't actually hit the door and it's not only at the back it's at the front as well the front door and of course the other doors as well that is brilliant that's brilliant technology okay let's get inside Okay, first impression inside, a lot of space, very easy buttons over here, um, easy to use, very easy to understand them, very easy to uh, sort of use them while you're driving at low speed, not necessarily that you have to. Also, by the way, the reason I wear these glasses is because they're prescription sunglasses. Right now it's very sunny and I have to apologize because some of you find it offensive when someone wears um, sunglasses, but this is unfortunate, it's out of my hand, so I have to actually have to have this. And uh, if I don't use this, I am not able to see the focus on the screen on my camera so that means that everything else will, will be out of focus so right now I can actually point at things and then where I want it to be so I'm sorry if you get offended by this my camera is about to fall and there's an airplane at the top as well well I have to get my shit together anyways back to the car very very comfortable in here absolutely love it seats have 155 positions or so that's insane oh man can fix everything pretty much okay you see i'm tall i'm 6'2 so i need space forget about the passenger in the back oh this is good anyhow Very good, fast as well. Steering wheel, absolutely love it. You can adjust it the old way, of course, the way you want it. I always like it in this position because I can see the cluster and the steering wheel is perfect where it needs to be. Um, that's the position I usually use on my car as well, though people don't like it because the steering wheel is too high. I love that. It doesn't bother my legs when I move them, um, especially because I use a manual. This is perfect as well. What else do you have in here? Very nice steering wheel. 
not flat bottom. I don't mind that. This is not a car for track, although you can take it to a track. Space-wise, you still get in here for your cup holders, two cup holders in here, armrest in the middle, armrest, you get a USB charge in here. Um, should I just show it to you? Okay, let me just take this camera. Okay, so here we go. You have two cup holders, you have a USB charge, and to close it, perfect. And then in here, we have the armrest. Not sure what this is. Oh, BMW digital key. Pretty cool, so you can basically open the car with this. Interesting. Anyhow, it goes back in there, and you have a light and charge as well here for your iPhone, and then the armrest the old way. Very comfortable. This does sim a little bit longer than the previous model. I like that. You can see my arm, it's basically um, stretching all the way. Pretty awesome, very good for long trips. I like to hold the steering wheel with two hands, but sometimes you get tired. What do we have in the steering wheel? Buttons, of course. Here you have for your cruise control, all the details. Um, and then over here, you got the other one for the menu. And then, um, but before we do that, we just roll up the windows on the other side as well. At the back. And of course you get a sunroof, so the old way. I absolutely love this shape of the um, lights in here. Look at that, it looks like shape of a diamond kind of thing, kind of style. Um, anyhow, let's close the sunroof. Okay, the sunroof is closed. Um, and of course, if you want to close the shade as well, what you do, press the other button, this button here to close the shade. Let's start a little bit with the cluster. Let's start the engine. Okay, I heard that part. Um, the menu here. This is our uh, media center and you go into media. You can control everything through here. Now, if you wanna find navigation, you have a shortcut, just press the button. If you want media, you have the media. Pretty straightforward. Um, I absolutely love this screen. Absolutely love it. Way bigger than the previous model. And of course, so crisp. The, the quality of the screen, it's so crisp. Very, very nice. Same thing over here with the cluster, seven inch. Very nice. Here's an interesting fact about the cluster. Uh, let me just go into, I'm going to focus that for you. When you press the gas pedal, and as the RPM reaches to each number, the font gets bigger. You see? And then we go to two, it gets bigger. That is actually very cool. I like details, so I had to mention that fact. And I think the same thing goes for the speed, um, the speedometer, sorry, um, it's the same idea. Now, let's look at the menu here. Okay, let's play around a bit with this. So some of these BMW uh, 3 Series have the feature of using the basically the scroll like this for the volume automatically without touching any buttons. This doesn't have it, unfortunately. It doesn't come with that package, but some of them do come with that package. Basically do it like this and you just raise the volume and if you go the other way, you lower the volume. So that's pretty easy. Um, the button over here, split, it just gives you the um, map over here, route preview, you can do the map. Um, you can do the map over here and it tells you where exactly you are Those for directions. Split screen, the other option you can do, it's route preview, you got position, tell you altitude, longitude as well. Um, pretty awesome for that and then we'll tell you with traffic so basically over here shows you the map where you are and over here will give you notification regarding the map uh, regarding the traffic so that's just basically it so we go back to no split and go back and then press the button option here and you go back in there um, other option let's go to settings you can configure the uh, map the way you want it um, you can do traffic all the updates that you need and then let's go to home or you can just press this um, if you press car it will give you the details 
Basically what you get is a tire pressure, engine oil, check controls, and service schedule. Pretty awesome, basic standard on those, and you got extra apps. You do have um, CarPlay as well and for Android at the same time. Um, if you wanna connect your phone, um, that's basically your car, tells you all the settings for the car and at the same time tells you the current situation of the car if you know if you need any oil change if the tire pressure is not normal uh, driver profile in here you can create your own profile so if you have two drivers let's say your wife and husband um, and you want to create which own you can basically do the same thing with the settings um, for your seat and in here you create your own profile and you customize based on that so let's go back to home that's your home button that's your um, phone those are basically but we haven't connected to the phone so we'll just tell you all the missed calls or phone calls or your recent phone calls as well and then you go to the media the crazy part with this is that this system comes with a 20 gigabytes of multimedia which basically you can store in the car which is pretty awesome right now we're in the radio you can connect it to your apple uh, play as well and you can connect it to um, your android at the same time um pretty awesome now, here's an interesting feature about this one. It's called the BMW Assist. So I can basically say, hey, hey BMW. Okay, hasn't recognized my voice yet. Hey BMW. Okay, it's not recognized my voice. So let me press this here. Adjust my seat. Please adjust the seat with the control elements provided on the seat. That she can do. Um, let's try... Turn on the AC. This function is currently not available. Okay, let's try another time. Turn on air conditioning. This function is currently not available. It's not working. And let's try... Find me McDonald's. Which one of these destinations? Okay, that's pretty awesome. Um, weather. Weather. Opening weather. Please continue with manual control. Lower all the windows. Clearing the rear window of ice or condensation cannot be operated via speech. Okay, so you can do it with your speech. Um, let's see. Find me a BMW service. Show fuel consumption. Average consumption is currently 16.2 liters per 100 kilometers. That's pretty awesome. Apparently, this does have the parking uh, thing. So I'm going to take out my phone and see how this works because this is going to be interesting. Self parking, this is pretty cool. Um, so now it, it found a parking spot and there's a button here that says, um, that says, this button here says P, basically you have to park and then um, I have to put it into reverse and then press the button park. Oh my god, this is scary. Oh, I have to fasten the seat belt and then park. Oh, this is so scary. Oh, this is scary. This is scary. This is scary. <laughs> oh my god, it's parking itself. It's parking itself. <laughs> this is parking itself. I am literally not doing anything. Wow. Okay, I gotta try that one more time. That was so cool. Okay, let's go for... Okay, time to go for a drive. Let's start this baby.
You see, my intuition was that I had to go and press the button here to start that, but it's actually over here. And I blame my Focus RS for that, because it's over there. Okay, let's go into, we're gonna start the car in to, let's say, Eco Drive. See how it does. Okay, breaks down. Oh, put into drive. Seat is too, okay. Here's an interesting fact. When you put into drive, this pulls back the seat pretty much and it sort of puts you in a tight position. And I noticed that as I put into drive, it automatically moved it into that. Um, okay, let's see here. Steering wheel is much lighter than the previous model. Um, I do remember the previous model to be a bit heavy. Um, this one seems very light. And, okay, let me just put this into that. Um, I'm gonna turn on the fan here. Of course, in eco mode, the throttle reaction is not the same. Um, the reason is because if it is very um, fast, the throttle reaction, you're basically spending more gas. So it is a bit slow, which is normal. So another interesting feature with this is that it has lane assist. So right now the computer is checking on the lines on the road, the ones in the middle and on the sides. And if you try to go on this side, it's vibrating. And um, what it basically does is that it helps you uh, stay within the lines to make sure you don't crash into other cars. So it constantly updating um, every time you drive. Let's put this baby into sport mode and we're gonna put this into uh, manual so downshift see the vibration right now starts because I went a little bit just on the side of the road on the white line and the steering wheel is basically stopping you from going out the, uh, off the lane so it's basically helping you. It's kind of annoying when you want to have some fun, but it is very good for some people that have our time staying within the lanes. Brakes, let's talk about brakes. I have to say this BMW, not the greatest. Uh, I don't know why they don't feel great. They don't feel, I mean, for the amount of power that you get on this car, you need a little bit more of brakes. I don't know why, but it doesn't feel quite there for me. Um, like, they're not, they're okay. They're not the greatest out there. Into the corners, this thing is very good. It is an X drive, so. Vibrating. It's pretty quick for 255 horsepower, and right now it's keeping me within the lanes. I just realized that there was an object on the right, and then there was the actual um, lane on the side. So I just went off just a bit on the left, and then the steering wheel is pretty much pushing you to move into the right side. That is very good technology, especially for people that have, as I said, have a hard time to maintain this. But when it comes to brakes right now, 
yeah, you gotta push hard on this to actually get it to stop. But, it's not that bad. Anyhow, that was it for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, please don't forget to check out my other videos. I do videos on modified cars, uh, supercars, classic cars, and of course, brand new models.